I have to see. Alrighty, so let's go over the necromancer morphs and we're gonna see what we're looking at here. I'm not gonna actually morph anything, we're just gonna kinda go over what they all do. CX, what's going on, man? How you doing? By the way, I'm sorry if I missed like a shit ton of messages while we were going over the patch notes. It was just a lot to read and a lot to talk about. So. All right, Glacial Colossus. Now costs 225 ultimate, dude. Does Necromancer proc Prismatic Onslaught without vamp? No, you're not undead. You're not an undead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like it was like yeah, it was a it was like an un yeah. I know exactly what you said. Collateral damage. Magblade was a collateral damage to the nerfing of Stamblade. So, Glacial Colossus is now two hundred twenty-five ultimate. It was not. I don't believe it was this much when I went. I don't believe it was this much when I went. Unless I'm just, like, not fucking remembering correctly. No, it was 150 ultimate, now up to 225. So the Pestilent Colossus now does its uh, disease damage, does more damage with each smash, and each smash applies major vulnerability to enemy hit for 3 seconds, increasing their damage taken by 30%. Glacial Colossus is, you just deal 3 frost smashes over time, and then the final hit will stun enemies. Flame Skull is Venom Skull. Lob an explosive skull at enemies, dealing 761 poison damage every third cast. Deals 20% increased damage. While slotted, casting any Necromancer ability will count towards this third cast. And then the Ricochet is that the third cast will bounce to other targets nearby. Dude, Blast Bones is fucking lit. Summons a decaying skeleton from the ground after two and a half seconds. The skeleton runs up to the target and explodes when it gets close to them, dealing disease damage and applying major defile for four seconds. Creates a corpse of bone death. Converts to stamina ability, deals damage, reduces healing. And then the stalking blast bones will deal more damage the longer it chases you. So if you run away, this will deal up to 50% more damage. It's super good. Uh, we also have uh, Avid Boneyard. So that's our ground AoE. We'll create a corpse, uh, we'll consume the corpse on cast to deal 20% more damage. And you are an ally standing in the graveyard can activate the grave robber synergy. And you can use your own synergy with this, which is super cool. Which is super, super cool. Yo, RLS, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that a lot, dude. And then Unnerving Boneyard gives Breach and Fracture. So it's just a ground AoE that gives Breach and Fracture. And this one allows you to use your own synergy. I used this for PvE personally. Skeletal Mage uh, basically puts an attacker by your side that just attacks shit. Uh, this does shock damage, and then when it dies, it will deal like a uh, burst of damage around. Um, and then the Skeletal Archer converts into a stamina ability, it deals physical damage, and the Archer will deal increased damage with every attack. Uh, Kohai, thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed my covering of the patch notes. Glad you guys enjoyed that, because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate on YouTube. <laughs> so thank you. Yo, dude. Shocking Siphon. The damage increase was not there when I was there, dude. This was not there. I, was, I don't remember that. Violently draining the last spark of life from a corpse, dealing disease damage over 12 seconds to the corpse and around it. If the Siphon lasts its full duration, it will explode. And while slotted, your damage is increased by 3%. That was not there when I was there. And then this just basically restores Magicka while you siphon the corpse. Bone Tyrant. The Colossus had its cost reduced. I was surprised, dude. To see a cost reduction? That was not what I was expecting. 250 ult instead of 300. I was not expecting that, dude. The Frozen Colossus went all the way up to 225. And this came down to 250. It was not expecting that. Uh, Pummeling Goliath. So basically you uh, become a Pummeling Goliath, increasing your max health by 30,000 for 20 seconds and immediately healing for 30,000. Uh, while we're transformed, your light attacks restore health. Your fully charged heavy attacks restore health. This ability scales off max health. And then you can also bash targets in a cone. And then Ravenous Goliath basically gives you an aura that drains nearby allies, scaling off your max health. 
De dude, necros are going to be so good for large-scale PvP. It's actually going to be silly. Ruinous Scythe. Slice into your enemy's life force, dealing 634 physical damage. Enemies damage received... I, ah, man, dude, I still kind of wish this was gone. Enemies damaged by you receive 2,000 healing absorption for 2 seconds, then gaining any healing that they receive. You go for 16.11 for the first enemy hit, an additional 537 for each additional enemy hit, up to 5 times. This portion scales off your maximum health. Uh, Hungry Scythe was uh, basically gave you a hot. So in addition to the base skill, this will give you hot. This dude is going to scale so well with the rest of the kit. You already have so many forms of Major Defile, and to be able to chuck this on top of it is just like... It's just fucking insane, dude. It's just crazy. Bone Armor. Beckoning Armor. So basically, Beckoning Armor is your uh, Major Warden Resolve. But when someone attacks you, they'll be pulled in. And that's going to occur once every three seconds. Uh, that's for range attacks. And then Summoner's Armor reduces the cost of your Necromancer Summons by 12%. Bitter Harvest. Sap the Lingering Life from Fresh Corpses, granting you two ultimate, healing for 399 every second for two seconds per corpse consumed. While you have the heal effect, you gain major protection. Uh, while slotted, your damage... Ta this was also not there. While slotted, your damage taken is reduced by 3%. Oh, boy. Necrotic Potency gives you ultimate upon corpses consumed. Bone Totem. Summon an effigy of bone at your feet that gives you minor protection. Uh, after two seconds, the totem instills fears, holding them in place for four seconds. It's basically a... It's just a stun. Uh, allies can activate pure agony, causing enemies to take 150 magic damage over 5 seconds and applying minor vulnerability to them for the duration, increasing their damage taken by 8%. And then we have Remote Totem, which basically allows you to throw that totem 28 meters. Yeah. Grave Grasp. Summon 3 patches of Skeletal Claws from the ground in front of you, snaring your enemies by 50% for 5 seconds and inflicting minor maim for 5 seconds, reducing their damage done by 15%. And then we have uh, Empowering Grass, Summon a Skeletal Claws from the ground, staring your enemies by 50% for 5 seconds and inflicting Minor Main for 5 seconds, hitting you or allies. So basically, it's just because an Empower. Living Death. They did not change the cost of Reanimate. I am surprised. I am surprised. This did not get changed. Wow. Wow, I am surprised. I'm surprised. Render flesh. Sacrifice your own power to repair damage flesh, healing you or an ally in front of you. For 1233 health, but applying minor defiles yourself for four seconds, reducing the healing received and health recovery by 15%. Consumes a corpse when you cast. Oh, uh, consumes a corpse near you when you ca when you heal a second target. Okay. Uh, and then resistant flesh gives you resistances based off the heal. They did nerf expunge. They gave it a health cost. I'm glad to see this shit was OP. This shit was OP. The first the first skill line, uh, this will be still be up on my Twitch channel tomorrow. This will still be up. Yeah. This will still be up. Uh expunge and modify. Embrace the power of death, removing up to two negative effects from you and restoring 500 magic and stamina for each negative effect remove. While slotted, reduce the cost of all your abilities by 3%. Wow. That was also not there. Wow. Yeah, after this, I'm going to put a build together really quick. Yeah. Hexproof. This is new. Embrace the power of death, removing up to four negative effects from yourself for all slotted and reduce the cost of all your abilities by 3%. Okay. That's new. Really quick, guys. While I continue reading these... Do we want to see me build Stammer Madge? What do we want to say? What do we want to say? That's a lot of Madge, dude. Wow, okay, Jesus. That was very one-sided. <laughs> Madger, I'm taking back my bits, but please don't, dude. Please don't. All right, well, guys, I think I think Madge won here. I think Madge won out here. I know I see there are some Stamboids, but I think Madge is the is the winner here. 
Didn't you plan Stam go Stam see interesting? But I didn't plan on doing anything to be honest. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm not sure. Uh, real quick, let me let me finish this. Uh, life amid death. Do you have the sent from the collector's edition in the PTS already? I am not sure. I haven't checked yet. Uh, renewing on death. Release residual fragments from fallen souls at a target location, healing you and your allies for 822 health. Consumes a corpse on cast immediately to remove up to three negative effects, continuing to heal you and your allies. And then we have enduring undeath. Release residual fragments of fallen souls at the target location, healing you and your allies for 822 health. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Can consume multiple corpses. Okay. Did they change spirit mender? Conjure a ghostly spirit to do your bidding and stand by your side for 16 seconds. The spirit heals you or Lowe's ally around you for every two seconds for starting 246 health. While active, 10% of the damage is transferred to the spirit instead. Okay, so that is still the same. This shit's so fucking good, dude. Especially because the spirit's untargetable. It's just so good. And then restoring tether. Dude, they added all these new 3% increases. They added all these... Siphon the last remnants of life from a corpse, healing for 2160 health over two seconds. Also heals allies in a radius around you. You restore stamina while siphoning the corpse. They add, dude, those 3% were not there when I went. Those were not there. Okay, we'll do we'll reuse passives real quick. When an enemy dies within four seconds of being damaged, one of your necro abilities, your next blast bone skeletal major spirit ender cast is free. Increase your critical strike chance against enemies under 25% health by 10% for each Gravelord ability slotted. While a Gravelord ability is active, your spell and physical penetration is increased by 1500. Increase your damage done with dots by 10%. Whatever an enemy you're in combat does in 20 meters of you, restore 100 magic and stamina. Uh, reduce damage taken from dots by 10%. We have bone tyrant ability active. Increase your healing received by 2% for each bone tyrant ability slotted. Increase max health by 2k. Uh, when you have a negative effect on you, your healing done is increased by 8%. When you have a living death ability slotted, your critical strike chance with all healing spells is increased by up to 20% in proportion to the target the severity of the target's wounds. When you use an ability on a corpse, you generate 10 ultimate. And while you have a necromancer summon active, magic and stamina recovery is increased by 300. Dude, holy fuck, man. That is insane. That is insane. Back. 